How's everybody doing today? Um, you ready? Uh, obviously, uh, you know, great win for us last week. I want to go back and thank all the fans uh, that came out and, uh, and cheered us on and helped create that unbelievable, a great atmosphere for us. Unbelievable, you know, in, in this time to have that, that energy and how critical their energy is in the course uh, of the game. Uh, you know, you go back, I think we've made a lot of improvements on, on, on both sides of the ball. Uh, but made some critical errors too. You know, the turnovers offensively, giving them the ball uh, on a short field twice to account for 14 of the 24 points we gave up really goes on the offense. You know, and then at, at 38 to 14, um, our ability to finish the game, if you look at the game from that point forward, offensively, not very good at all. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, they're going forward a lot on fourth down. And we got to, you got to understand that, that, you know, it, it, when you get the big leads, getting off the field's not just about third down, it's about third down and fourth down. And, uh, so we got we got that stuff that that we can continue to uh, continue to improve on. Uh, on the injury front, we got out of the game pretty healthy. Uh, as I said, I wasn't like with you guys, and, and it, it was nothing last week with anything. Here's here's how we'll handle this the rest of the year, with the uniqueness of situations uh, of COVID and trying to, everybody trying to figure out, okay, well, what's this guy's got? What's that guy got? What's this going on? Is he COVID positive? If he's not for the you know for the safety, security, and the privacy of players. Uh, if someone had, does have a, a, an injury that will keep anybody out a significant amount of time, I'm, I'll sh I will certainly let you guys know on the injury front, uh, as we did with, you know, with, uh, with Ethan White, who's coming along, and we expect him back hopefully within the next, uh, hopefully two more weeks. Um, but everybody else will just kind of keep it going with who's available, who's not available, just who's a not available on game day. But, you know, at this point, um, coming out of that game, we, we – uh, we didn't have any injuries, and with the you know Ethan, like I said, is still two weeks, and um, Ethan, Ethan, and Ethan, Ethan Pounds, Ethan White, uh, uh, out a couple more weeks. Um, we expect everybody to be available on Saturday. Pat, you want to lead off? Yeah, Dan, uh, can you talk about uh, the the ability that other teams have been having the first two games to get first downs running the football? You guys have. Um, and give them 25 first downs on, on the rush. And, and it seems like the edge guys aren't quite containing sometimes. Yeah, you know, I mean, well, there's a couple combinations of that. You know, one, which is in, in game one, a uh, bunch of their first downs on third down conversions came on scrambles, which essentially is a run first down, um, even though it's a pass play. Right. You know, so, you know, we kind of break it down in different categories. Is it a run pay or pass play? And then there's a pass play that's a scramble and a pass play that's a throw and a completion. I'll go here. I, don't know. I was like looking at people, um, you know, so that's one. And then a couple of, you know, and then a bunch of the other ones in the short yardage, you know, and I think, you know, you, you go go back to this past game when you're you're six, you know, you, you, you know, the defense, we, we stop them 11 out of 17 on third down but give up five out of six on fourth down. And, you know, a bunch of those were kind of fourth and shorts that we gave up the run. So, um, you know, we got to make sure that we're taking care of business, not just third down, fourth down, especially when we're playing with a big lead. Mark Long. So, Dan, with that said, do you consider some of the defensive issues fluky a little bit? I mean, you did no, no, I, I, plays to get to 350 yards or whatever it was. Certainly not fluky. I think, um, you know, if, if you watch it, I think it's growing into it. I think we tackled, we tackled significantly better this game and our effort was significantly better this past game. Uh, I think you're, we're still getting into the live aspect of football and the different things for especially guys that haven't played. You know, when you, you look at it and say, hey, you know, coach, we're great on third down. Um, when, you, when you're up 38, you know, whatever it is, 38 to 14, whatever it was at that point, when you're up at that score, it really goes into fourth down. They Middle of the third quarter, they started going, they were, they were a four-down team. And, you know, so that is, you know, you have, you have double the you – you have to make two plays to get off the field instead of one. Um, so I, I think that's part of it, of, of how the game came on. And I think, you know, one thing I'd love to see is do a start faster. If you look at the last two games, we've kind of started slow, completely shut them down in the middle, and then didn't finish at the end. Um, you know, and then this week you throw into that – uh, the, the offense not finishing at the end. You know, I mean, one, from 38-14, when you look at that stat line at 38-14, from that point forward, we had nine plays for 11 yards on offense. 
I had a turnover and a three and out. You know, I'm not, I don't count the take a knee at the end of the game, but you know what I mean? But nine plays, 11 yards, a three and out, and a turnover. Uh, defensively had 40 plays for 160 yards. More than a third of their yards came after we were up 38-14. Uh, gave up 10 points and then stopped them on a goal line play at the end. So, uh, you know, it's our ability right then as a full complete team at that point to put the game away. You know, you're, you're a stop or a score away really from the game being completely out of reach and a lot of backups even playing, you know, and, and that was disappointing that we didn't do that. It kind of like, you know, we, we kind of started a little bit slow defensively, got into a rhythm and, and jumped out big. And then kind of instead of let's finish the game, we just kind of cruise to the finish line. And, and we got to, you know, we got to get that, that changed. How do you teach or coach that killer instinct that you're talking about, that step on your throat mentality? Well, I, I just think it comes from, you know, of, of playing. You know what I mean? It's, it is, it's getting back into that whole game mindset. You know, it's like, hey, at practice, hey, we got it taught. I got it figured out. I know we got this period. I got it, coach. I'm kind of going through the motions. You know, and guys looking at the scoreboard saying, okay, 38-14, we got this one kind of in the bag. We're going to – I know we got to keep playing, but let's go through the motions. And, and you can't do that, you know. And um, I, I just think it's, a, uh, it's maybe a side effect of everything going on right now, you know, that um, – just part of the whole deal. So it's something we talked about this morning as a team. And it's something we talked about that, that it, it comes from practice. It's got to be addressed at practice. It's got to be addressed on how we practice. It's got to be addressed with every aspect and every member of the team of start to finish the effort we give in the looks we give, whether I'm on a scout team or whether, you know, I'm on I'm, I'm a backup or I'm a starter. I mean, it, it's got to start at practice with just that mindset of complete, while we're playing, everything we do, maximum effort and finish. Robbie. Hey, Coach. I was just wondering, as an offensive guy, how frustrating is it when you only get a handful of plays in, in an entire quarter? And do you think teams are going to try to control the ball on you more in the future to keep your offense on the bench? Yeah, I think teams have their plan of who they are. You know, like like you, you played Ole Miss two weeks ago. They were just going to go as fast as possible. Uh, South Carolina plan obviously was to, you know, ball control, slow the game way down, limit the number of plays we get offensively. Um, so, you know, I think that goes from game to game, you know, and it, but it, it shows the, the efficiency you need offensively. You got to be, you got to be efficient on offense. And that's, that's a big thing we always harp on because you don't know how many plays and opportunities you get. Obviously our, our last a uh, couple possessions offensively were very disappointing. Really, the whole second half, very disappointing offensively uh, of the game. Uh, but, um, you know, I mean, that, that's the key, the, the, kind of the key to being efficient uh, throughout the course of the game. Matt Baker. Hey, Dan. Uh, how well do you know Jimbo Fisher? And I think you guys have gone up uh, against each other several times when you were assistants, but not as head coaches, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we've played against them. Because he was said uh, he got to A and M when I got here. Is that right? About right. Um, yeah. So I don't think I've ever played against him uh, that way. So I mean, I, I know him. I know him. Talk to him a little bit. I know him from the SEC meetings and know him as head coach and talk him that way. But you know, um, never spent significant amount of time with him. Always thought. I mean, does a great job. Obviously, a great offensive coach. Uh, you know, puts his guys in good position to make plays, innovative, not, you know, understands how to utilize the personality, per personnel that he has uh, to build the offense around the personnel, not just, hey, this is our system and I got to slam everybody, you know, everyone has to fit this exact system, has the ability to kind of uh, play to the strengths of his players. And, and what's jumped out to you on film just in your early looking at a and &M? Uh, you know, I mean, everything. They're, they're, they're very, very talented players. Got a veteran quarterback. They got a bunch of really good skilled players offensively uh, that can make plays uh, in the pass game and in the run game. Um, you know, defensively, uh, hands down the best defensive front we've seen. Uh, they, they've had, they've been a little banged up in the secondary, but they got really athletic guys and veteran linebackers. So, uh, you know, certainly a team, I know that preseason, a lot of people expecting to go compete for the SEC West championship. And you can see why on film that they're, they are a, they, they are a, a legit football team. You know, even last week's game, you saw them. I mean, you know, I saw, I, I saw them 
play right with Alabama, with the exception of explosive plays. You know, I mean, I mean, he, uh, you look at some of the big number plays. You know, it wasn't like Alabama was just driving the ball up and down the field on them. They were, they, you know, they they hit some explosives to kind of pull the game away. Thank you. Edgar. Yeah, hey Dan. It, it's too early to make too many judgments, but I had a couple nonetheless. <laughs> uh, well. Well, offensive balance has been elusive again. I mean, 357 to 138. I mean, is that just the nature of the team? Is that okay? What, what are the causes there? Nah, I don't know. You, just, well, you, you always play to the strength of your guys. So, you know, we, we, you go with what's working. Um, like our goal coming in this week, our goal is to be 50-50, right? And, I mean, if we can knock them off the ball, run the ball, we'll do that. And if, you know, they're struggling covering us. We're going to keep throwing it. And, you know, so um, I don't know, that, that's my best answer for you. I mean, our goal, when we read up the game plan, our goal going into every game is to be 50 50. Um, you know, the first two games that, you know, we go and do our evaluations, we're run efficient. So our run game's been very efficient, been, been, been a, a positive for us this year uh, as we evaluate by, from play to play the run efficiency. So our run game's been actually really good this year. We just we've had a lot of success throwing, and so we've probably called more pass plays. And uh, but our goal is to be 50-50. I mean, you're averaging 45 points. I'm, I'm not like ripping you guys. I was just kind of. Curious. I'm with you, but it, but it, but it, like statistically, I don't know. As you're just calling plays, you kind of get into a flow of things, and you're looking at matchups and how people are playing you, um, where we're getting the ball, who we want to get it to. Um, Kind of the flow of the game and how it goes sometimes too, you know. Um, I don't know. What, what do you what do you think of the all SEC schedule? I mean, it's early again, but I mean, you guys basically swapped out South Alabama in week three for a visit to Kyle Field. Yeah, I mean, and, and nothing against nothing against South Alabama, but Texas A&M is probably a little bit better. Uh, you know, and um, I, I think it's going to be a challenge. You know, I, I think obviously when you look at it playing the uh, all SEC schedule, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it makes every game uh, is critical. I think, you know, you, when you're playing in the, in, in the best conference in college football, um, not even really close, um, and you got to play 10 conference games, right? And everybody else is like playing seven or eight. Um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it, 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 it certainly is going to lead for a, uh, a challenging year. But you know what? If you're a competitor, uh, I'm a competitor and our guys are competitor. I think our guys are really excited about having the opportunity to play an all SEC schedule and just every week be in a big time game. Thank you, David. Well, Coach, uh, this past week on, on the second drive uh, of a tied SEC game, you have Whittemore, Shorter, and Henderson out there at wide receiver, right at running back on the field together, and also part of a drive right before halftime. Do those situations show how much you trust those young guys? Absolutely. And, well, I mean, they came out, you look at them, and they make plays. You know, one of the things we try to do is roll our guys through. And, you know, uh, kind of going back to the other one, you're going to play a 10-game SEC schedule. Uh, with COVID, with everything else happening, you better have guys get got to be ready for the next man up mentality more than ever before. Uh, so part of our job is making sure guys are ready to go do that. And um, you know, you don't you don't get better always sitting on the bench the entire time. So we, we're not afraid to roll guys through uh, and get them out there on the field. And you know, I mean, those guys of those guys. I mean, Trent came out had a pretty good game. Uh, Shorter came out had a pretty good game. Xavier Henderson's played pretty well so far. Um, and, you know, what, what, what happens is when you get in on Sunday afterwards and you look at the total number of reps, very much to what we did last year, um, it allow, it, it's going to keep guys healthier for the course of the season, hopefully. It keeps them fresher during the course of the game. Uh, the receivers are major contributors in special teams, all of the, and the running backs, our skill players are major contributors in special teams. So uh, that's one of, the, one of the reasons we do it is, is uh, those guys work out of the practice. They've, they've earned the right to get some snaps. Uh, we keep them in, and I think it helps the program as a whole. Cassidy. Hey, Dan. Um, I, I know you were talking about the last drive, or especially in the fourth quarter, like some of that is just the offense taking their foot off the gas. But Todd talked last week as well about at the Ole Miss game, 
when you know that the other team is down two scores, they're going to have to get an onside kick. You almost want to give them the clock a little bit. Mm -hmm. give them clock. From an offense, offensive perspective, what could you do to counteract that? I mean, what? Well, I, I think this, you know, and I always – I look at things this way when you're, you know, and I've always believed this as an offensive coach. When you're down two scores, right, you have to get the first before you can get the second. And sometimes you get in such a rush to get the first, you never give yourself an opportunity to get the second. So, uh, obviously, you got to manage the clock. you got to look at your timeout situation, the score of the game. How much time do you need for the second score, right? Uh, and make sure you put yourself in a position to get the second score but not at a panic to not get the first, if that makes sense. So, you know, you're always – when you, you come out there in a lot of the, the, the situations um, that you're in, you know, depending on the clock, you're going to kind of – instead of going hurry up two-minute offense, you're going to run your offense to get the first score. Now, eventually there gets to the point where you got to pick up the tempo and go, uh, but you want to run your offense to get that first score. And then – now it's a one-score game. Now – do you onside kick? What's our timeout situation? Do we kick deep and pin them deep and try to get the ball back and how much time we need if we can get off the field? Do we try the onside kick with the amount of time left or how is that going to affect field position when we get it back a, a, another time? Uh, so I think all of those things come into consideration, how you're trying to manage the game in the fourth quarter. It uh, does defensively. If you look, the last two games, you know, and I want to, you know, trust me, and I, I know Todd, all of us talk about it. We want to get off the field. You know, I mean, create, create, get, get the defense off the field, get the offense back on the field, you know, up, up multiple scores in the fourth quarter. Uh, but not to the point where we want to give up an explosive play and give them an easy score. Uh, we want to make them earn it. So it's, it's kind of that fine line back and forth. And each of the last two weeks, basically, the defense has kind of finished the game out um, on the field by, you know, basically the defense eating up the clock. Uh, for us instead of the offense having to go out there and grind it out with first downs. Let the defense, you know, force them to go on a long drive, keep it all in front of them, don't give them anything easy, and basically end the game. And I know, like, for fans or just people watching, that can be frustrating to watch and think, why are they why are they letting them pick up, you know, six yards for a first down? But as analytics has become more and more a part of it, how much of your mindset has changed to – do well, it is. It's, you know, it is, right? I mean, a good term I had, I had a friend of mine use after a game. Like, it, it was like annoying, you know, like we want to get a stop and get the offense on the field. It kind of got annoying. Um, but it also won. And, you know, in the end, our, our goal is to win football games however we need to do it. Um, and, you know, now, now trust me, I, I'd rather us get off the field, get the offense, the ball back, and, and you know, go score again and, and, you know, finish the game out that way and not – you know, even have the opportunity for it to get close at the end after being up, you know, uh, we were up 24 in the third quarter uh, to not even let it get close. But um, but you're also going to play, you know, everything you're doing is playing to win the game, not to um, – not not to make mistakes. You know, I mean, it'd be a, a terrible thing to sit there and say, hey, you know, our, our – I, I don't know what that would be, you know, like our, – just our decisions cost us the game. You know, I never want I never want to sit there and say, boy, our decisions to play um, maybe for fun or excitement or whatever the word might be cost us a game instead of doing what we needed to do to win. Thanks, Dan. Buddy. Hey, Dan. Hey. <clears throat> Can you explain a little bit about your grading process? Who does the grading? Yep. Uh, and is it true that Whittemore was among the highest graded? Yeah, he graded out a champion. So our grading process is this. You know, basically if, if the position coaches grade it and the coordinators will meet with them afterwards. Uh, we'll watch it kind of together as a group to go through the grades. Uh, so, you know, on ours, either you get an S or you, S, you do the right thing, minus you did the wrong thing. You know, you get a plus, uh, you did the right thing and something special beyond that, a double minus, you had an MA turnover, made a critical error, a, a zero, you really had no effect on the play. You weren't involved in the play in any way, shape, or form. Uh, then mathematically, you, we have a, the formula we kind of use to grade all that out. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the math on it right now, but essentially, and if you grade 80%, um, you grade a champion for us, you know, and so 
Uh, we had a bunch of guys that graded out champions uh, this week. Whitmore was one of the guys that graded the champion, had a great game. Uh, you know, it helps because I think he, you know, a touchdown. So you get, you get a plus for a touchdown, a, a plus for a spectacular catch over the middle, uh, as well as being consistent on your other plays. So you get kind of that extra credit on those things. Um, but that's how the system works. And we, we look at guys that we figure if you grade 80% or above, that's a championship effort or champion effort, a championship effort. And so you grade a champion and, um, you know, you get, you're on the board downstairs, you get recognized in front of the team, you get your, 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 uh, a little, a champion tag and all that stuff. Okay. And if I, or a battery dies, um, can you talk about the offense and defense in terms of how they come together and you as the head coach, I know there's a tendency for coaches to be more concerned about their own area of expertise. Mm -hmm. I know one time Coach Spurry made it a point to ride the defensive bus because he felt like he might be sliding. Is there <laughs> any of that going on? Uh, no, I, I ride the defensive bus. Well, now, now we don't. Now everybody's in assigned specific bus seats of that normally defense is on bus one and I'm on I ride with the defense uh, but it isn't no I think we come together you know I mean me as a head coach my job I know I, I'm probably I'm a little more offensive oriented but I spend uh, on the practice field I spend as much time with the defense as I do the offense um, you know in the meeting times I spend more with the offensive staff than the defensive staff uh, just because that's kind of you know where, where where my specialty is and where I've always been um, but I do think as a coaching staff, we come together every week to know what the plan is and make sure everybody's on the same page, right? Our, our goal is to win the game. And if we win three to nothing, that's a celebration. And if we win 42, 41, that's a celebration. And chances are, um, you know, both could frustrate fans, but usually it's, you know, what the plan was going into it. Right. You know, you, you, we, we're, we're collaborating, which is, hey, you know, offensively, hey, you know, we, we want to this. This team's a temp, uh, super high tempo team. We might need to play a little bit more ball control to give the defensive guys some rest between series. Uh, and that'll affect how we do things offensively. OK. Hey, this team is a one is, is a big time defense. Off, so defense, we need this. You know, hey, we have got to take we have got to be able to create three and outs to flip field position for the offense, saying, you know, they, they, these guys got great players. It's going to be tough for us to drive the length of the field. Uh, everything kind of works and is coordinated together within the staff so that we go into a game, we kind of know the offensive and defensive plan as coaches. You know, the players, uh, we, we, they, they know and we put on them to a point of what we do, but, you know, not as much as the entire – after before the game, we talk a little bit about the big picture. After the game, we talk about the big picture of it all. But, you know, they have so many responsibilities from one play to the next. I'm worried about are you going as hard as you can doing your job on this play. Um, and we'll take care of the big picture part of managing the, the whole course of the game for you. Thank you. Nick. Hey, Coach. Um, after the game, you mentioned kind of we take what the defense gives us. I mean, that's probably hard to do for a quarterback when you've got someone like Kyle Pitts. Mm -hmm. But what does – what makes Kyle Trask uniquely, uh, you know, I guess able to kind of do that when you have a guy like Kyle Pitts but to still be able to spread the ball around and, and take what the defense gives him? Well, I mean, I, you know what, he's, he's been in the system for a while. Brian does a great job coaching the quarterbacks, and we, we talk about it is, you know, um, as we design it, you come out, you look at the coverage, you're looking at the matchup, you have an anticipate, uh, you don't assume, but you anticipate where the, you think the ball is going to go, and then you go through your read and you deliver the ball to where it's supposed to be. And um, that's why he's playing quarterback for us. You know, if he wasn't doing that, we'd go with somebody else. Um, and, you know, that, that's just kind of what we, we've always expected of our quarterbacks, you know. Now, we, we have get it twos. Um, you know, and on those ones, he's going to try to get the – he's getting the ball to that guy, you know. But if not, I'm just going through my progression and I'm just going through my reads and taking what the defense gives me. And, you know, that's the sign of what we expect out of quarterbacks. That's a sign of good quarterback play, to be honest with you. And, uh, um, you know, I, that, that's 
our, our job is to kind of create the matchups or to get it to's or to create advantageous matchups for a guy like, uh, you know, Trey Grimes or Kyle Pitts or Kadarius Tony or whoever's in the, the, the game to create those advantageous matchups uh, for the receivers or, you know, motion of running back. You've seen us do that a bunch, motion of running backs, how, how we're creating the matchups on us as we create the game plan. Um, and, you know, his job is to just go take that game plan and manage it throughout the course of the game. I think you've said in the past, play calling has kind of collaborative between you and Billy and John and Brian. Has it changed? The play calling changed at all with, with Brian being the offensive coordinator this year? What's the process? No, it's really the same deal right there. We're all co very collaborative in the game plan, putting it all together. Between series, we kind of get opinions of what everybody wants to run and what they like. Uh, and then while we're on the field, um, you know, Brian or I call the plays, you know, and so, um, you know, so that's kind of how the collaboration works is, you know, that that, you know, this that right now, everybody inputs probably equal uh, in between series. Everybody's input is is kind of all equal of what we want to do. And then on that specific play, you know, I mean, someone's got to spit it out. So it's, sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's Brian. Sometimes it's both of us. We both want to do something and we yell it out. So. Thanks, Coach. And I usually get the final say when that happens. Doesn't mean we're going to run my play, but if Brian and I both yell a play out, you know, I'll be like, yep, run yours, call it. And, you know, he just calls the play. So, you know, I stop talking so it's not like multiple people saying things at the same time. Zach. Hey, uh, Dan, uh, Zach got named uh, Defensive Lineman of the Week in the SEC. Can you just uh, speak to what he did this offseason, putting on weight, making that full transition to defensive tackle, and how much that's helped you? Well, I, I think when you know you looked at him and you look at a guy that can play inside, outside with a little bit of, of a mix there. Now, um, and, and I think really you look at your self-evaluation. I think Zach's a guy that, that has bought into our program, uh, you know, more than or at least as much of any of the D linemen we've had since we've been here of what we what we expect from him what would the effort we expect him to play and how we expect him to do it um has done an amazing job of buying into all of that and part of that also you look at the self-evaluation I'm saying hey I'm, I'm not this twitchy edge rusher uh even though I have the athletic ability to play defensive end and I'm kind of so uh you know and I'm not this big bulky interior guy so how do I become this guy that's an in, a really athletic interior guy that can be a bigger outside guy and really buy into that? It, you, you know, you've seen him uh, look at what his strengths are and then build and play to his strengths and buy into his strengths. Uh, and you see the success he's having now. I think, I mean, he, he, he's a, you know, I mean, he, he's not going to be a big 330 inside guy, but he's really quick. He's big enough to be inside and quick inside. Uh, and he's not this twitch edge guy, but he's a big edge guy that has athletic ability. And so that, you know, helps him create those different matchups where we move him around on the field. And, and how much has him making that transition helped with Kyrie being out? I mean, obviously you'd lose a two-year starter, a defensive tackle. It's got to affect at least the depth there and to have him playing as well as he is. Well, I think, I think it does. You look at the first two games, the different guys that we've had missing in, on defense, uh, has made it a challenge, you know, for, with guys missing for multiple reasons. And, um, you know, uh, it's made it a challenge. It's forced him to have to step up a lot more, you know. It's, but, it, but, you know, sometimes when, when that stuff happens, you know, when, when, the, uh, when, when you have guys out, it might be a struggle in that given week, but it creates depth in the long term of a season. And hopefully we're going to see that as we move forward, that we're going to start having a lot more depth on the, on the defensive front seven. Is, and is, uh, is Kyle still not throwing a pick this year? Kyle Trask? Yeah. He threw a pick. It lo didn't look like it on the replay. Well, I don't know. Call, 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 call those guys in. I, um, you know, they evaluate. They, 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 well, they evaluate all the turnovers. So, you know, I mean, it's one thing. You know, I, I think when the coach, when you get into a challenge situation in the course of a game, on a bang-bang play, you're going to th – think do you want to challenge it on anything like a scoring play uh, on any scoring plays or change of possession plays there is a gap between you know uh, one play and the next you know it's not you don't see the the offense you know if it hey if, if it's a questionable play in our favor man you want to snap the ball as fast as you possibly can the next play if it's a questionable play against our favor we might hard count take our time snap it with one second on the play clock right 
uh, or if, if, it's, if we're not on offense, challenge one way or the other, depending on that. But on those type of plays, they evaluate, they, they, uh, they review every play. And so the ones that are going to have, you know, you look bef- after turnovers when, it, you know, there's a break in the action or a scoring play before a PAT field goal is going to be kicked. Um, you know, you just kind of assume they got the call right because if, if it wasn't confirmed, they would stop the game. Allen and then close with Edgar. Hey, Dan, that rub play that freed up uh, Whittemore on the goal line touchdown, mm-hmm. what was sort of your impression of, uh, of Justin Shorter's uh, effectiveness? On that? Did. He just ran a hitch. Um, but the benefit he has, he's a big guy, so he goes and runs a hitch, and he's, and he's a physical guy. So sometimes hard to press physical guys. He did a great job just running a hitch uh, and being there. But when you're, you, you know, you, you actually are, you know, whatever it is, 6'4", 220, 225. You know, you, when you go, you can push and get leverage. And then he hitches on the goal line. And they ended up both guys tra- covering him. And Trent wheeled around it and came free. Uh, you know, and the benefit of that, of having a big guy, is if the, if the both guys passed off to Trent, you got a, this big giant guy standing there with a big target right in the, uh, in the middle of the end zone. So. Uh, I thought he did a great job of it. Um, and also, uh, can you assess sort of your tackles through two games? Um, it, it looks like you guys obviously get the ball out quick a lot, but you've also given the downfield route time to develop. So you, you must feel pretty confident about uh, having two or three seconds back there. To yeah, I think those guys have done pretty good. You know, I mean, and um, I'm always extremely critical, so there's things we can get better. Um, at a consistent basis, though, I think those guys have played pretty solidly so far this year. Uh, you know, and and uh, you know, but when you know when you're going to throw the ball, we've thrown the ball probably as, as Edgar said, we've thrown it more than we've run it uh, so far this year. So those guys get put on a little bit more of an island, and and then those expectations go up, uh, or their their chance of exposure gets goes up, um, and they've handled that well. And you know, it's nice to have guys that are veteran guys there. Uh, that have played some football, you know, so that they can handle all of that stuff. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Dan, I had one quick follow-up and then one question, if I may, please. Uh, the follow-up is... Wouldn't that be two me? questions then? It is. Are you okay with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure. Um, so, but the, the follow-up is, do you see this, the cutthroat mentality in this team? I mean, you've had it with, obviously, a couple championship teams. I'm sure the 14 Mississippi State team. Do you see that with this group? Or are you trying to, like... I think it's, I think it's growing. Um, and I don't want to downplay that we don't have it on that point. I think the season and the uniqueness of the season... Um, has led to that, you know? If you would have said in March you think you're going to have that, I would have said yes. And I think everything gone on, I think we're still developing and figuring a lot of things out. And the other thing is, what I guess what's been the biggest impact created by the pandemic, do you think, on the field for you? I mean, is it development or depth? And then it, what's been in your favor? I mean, Kyle Trask's experience, obviously. I mean, what, what would you say to that question? Uh, I don't know that I jumped at anything is in our favor. I'm not, like, saying anything that is going on with the pandemic is a benefit. But um, I think, if, if, I think our, our certain experience at certain positions, uh, obviously continuity of the program, continuity of the staff, um, and experience at certain positions certainly helps when all of this is going on. Um, on the flip side of it, the, you probably believe just too much to even go of, you know, for me, I'm a very, I, there, there are certain things we like within our development, you know, and, and so much has been missed and so much is different and our routine's different and how we meet and how we do things. Um, everybody's very, very much out of their comfort zone and I kind of, uh, I'm a very routine, disciplined, structural, development type person. Um, and so that's probably the hardest thing is just everything <laughs> that, that, that's going on with the, the whole pandemic. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. Is that it? We'll see y'all. Thank you. Talk to y'all Wednesday.